by accident. Okay, so having a talk with Liam over the uh, break here, maybe we, I mean, I'm calling this dynamic experience, but is it more about engagement? Should it be, am I mistitling it? Should it be called principles of engagement? Probably. So I think next year I'm going to change it to engagement. It won't make any difference for this year. But I think it's probably principles of engagement, really, more than dynamic. Yeah? Do we, do we think that's right or not? Yeah? Okay, good. Okay, so. Let's scratch this thing on. Um, your viewpoint, what do you think? So gamification, good or bad? Force for evil? Force for just a load of fluff? Yes? I just don't really see a point in it like, like, for example, in terms of the, um, like that, the monkey for me, like, it's just some random thing that pops up that, I don't know, like, if I, if I saw it on the corner of the page where I could pop up in front of me, I'd click it just so I could go to the next page, but it, I don't think it makes a difference in the particular interaction. Like, phonology, I can see how that can subconsciously or indirectly cause a more positive um, response to what you're doing. But gamification, well, from the few examples that I've seen here, just, I don't know, I mean, you can put it in there, but I don't think it'll make a massive difference as the way, well, I personally respond to the thing. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it may be that, so there's two things there. It may be that, one, it is good and there's just not enough examples that's been written. Or maybe it's just not necessarily good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Lynn told me about, um, uh, um, well, actually, you said. Tell them. Tell them about the, the gamification. So I saw, I saw an example of gamification where um, a tech company used a recycling bin and it turned that into a game. So then there was like lights flashing, high score, and uh, loads of noises. And basically, yeah, the more you recycle, the quicker you do it, the higher the score you get. And then like in like a week period of testing, they have like quadruple the amount of recycling that most people do. Have you ever gone down at night and like big crowds were like crowding around the recycling bin just to chuck all the stuff in there? And was it not also about um, linking up different cities? Yeah, yeah, and it, it links up different cities as well, so it's like competitive edge. And uh, yes, it happened like London, New York, and around the world. Did it get people using the system in terms of putting things that shouldn't be recycled into the bin? No, 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 because there was also specific holes for different recycling. And uh, it got more people recycling uh, more often because, yeah. And there was actually a crowd just stood around a bin, which is mad. But yeah, it works really well. Yeah, good. Okay. So, I mean, that's one example of that, you know, we could say, yeah, that's quite a good thing. Of course, it ends. So, is it really a game or is it gamification? Because if it ends, then it seems more like a game. As opposed to if it continued over, you know, and still was continuing and increasing people's recycling, then it did gamified recycling as opposed to a game which involves recycling. That's possibly the way of thinking about it, I'm not sure. But was on that, we'll certainly put that on the site. Yes? Um, I think it's a really good way of getting, well, from the point of view of people creating it, getting people involved who wouldn't know anything. Yeah, it's like people uh, following at home and sexy, yeah. where they don't know anything about it. People buy it thousand pounds of computers for the sole purpose of doing their folding at home on that. They yeah. would never have considered spending a thousand pounds helping out medical research yeah. until the whole idea of the leaderboard and how many points that they can get and all of that comes into it. I just wouldn't consider that. So, do we think that that is an example of ground up gamification? Yeah, possibly. Yeah? Yeah, do we think? Well, do we think that setting at home and what is it? What we folding at home. Folding at home is um, an example of ground up gamification. That there's a, that they've designed it specifically so that it gets people on board. What is it? Um, you donate your like, computational resources to use the really GPU to perform in distributed complex mathematics just for the uh, purpose of folding at home is for protein folding and setting at home and searching for... And the it's that challenge. Yes. But um, the better hardware does more calculations, gets more points, so people are constantly upgrading to get out the new Yeah. So what do you think? Do you think that's that? I mean, that to me seems more like uh, um, game, bottom up gamification because it's continue. I mean, it's actually continuously happening. It doesn't sort of finish. Yeah. Yes. I think it's a good example of gamification for the government. But on the flip side, if they tie in with I don't know, a 
a large scale, a 25 shore, a large scale CP 25 shore. It's quite easy for us to do it from what is generally seen as a road A to something that's completely corporate or completely subverted into just driving towards sales. Yes. Which is just going to make a completely different slant on it. It may change people's opinion, but it may drive out people to be more tired. Yeah, that's true. So if they went for a GPU manufacturer or something like this, then yeah, then it could be a corporate edge, and that corporate edge would turn people off because it's just about sales of the GPU now. Yeah? yeah. Actually, they may not have to leave the calls and just saying, there's not enough people getting involved. How can we get more people doing it? Yeah. Um, people are generally, uh, most people have some sort of competitive nature. So adding the leaderboard is going to get more people involved. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so adding the leaderboard might be, might be important. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We're talking about it. We might have um, uh, people might associate bad things with it because of the the ends the ends it was trying to be used for. But it's just a means. Yeah. You can't inherently say whether a means is good or bad unless you know what the ends is. Yes. Like, is a screwdriver good or bad? Well, it's bad for trying to stab someone. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't give me a bad opinion of screwdrivers. Yes. Because screwdrivers aren't designed to stab people. They're just a means. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean that's true. That's very true. Okay. So. It could be, so what, what's the general viewpoint then? Do we think it's reasonably good? Do we think it's a good idea or do we think it's a bad idea? Yes? I think gamification is quite gimmicky and any positive results you're going to get from it are going to be uh, more, perhaps more generally than not short-lived. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously the recycling thing is a very good, uh, a very good example of it, but I'm not sure that every single night of every single week of every single year people are going to be standing around that bin putting all the recycling in, no matter how much recycling they get, eventually they're going to get bored and it's going to tail off. Yeah, I've said check it I don't think it's a, it's, a, it's a long term thing. Maybe that's, yeah, that's maybe that's very true, yeah. Does it? I suppose you, you, you think of it, well, okay, as long as it's an advertising thing, it gets people doing something, possibly. But yeah, I think you're right. It, 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 it might not be such a good, a good thing. Any more views on whether it's good or bad? Pros and cons? Yes. That's pretty good. I feel like it's LinkedIn. LinkedIn has it for completing a profile and giving information. Yeah. And actually that's... It could be partly them gathering information for their means, but also it's you because LinkedIn's got a lot more about uh, employers who search on LinkedIn to find for certain qualifications. So yeah. it's, uh, some people may think, oh, I've, I've got a LinkedIn account, I haven't got that much of this matter, whereas they've got, but you kind of need this much information. That's most people to put on it because it's good for them. Yeah. Good for us. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Any more? No? Okay. So, any arcade? We're going to have a look at this to, uh, so we can see this in a bit more of a, a nice uh, way. It's only five minutes. I should have kept it up, but I didn't. Um, so we'll see if we can just the advert. Gives a bit more about the gamification. This is a story of a drink that became a drop, that became a smoke, that became a flood. A flood that put a real dampener on the Stone family's day. Just don't know this. Don't buy anything they're trying to sell you. It's terrible. Your home became uninhabited, keeping them safe. The University of Manchester no way endorses this advertisement. Rubbish. Thank you for listening. If you call it switch now, more than promise to beat your new pick. got some of you guys should meet. Allison has several deadlines piling up on her right now, and honestly, she probably deserves a week off at this point anyway. So today we are joined by a special guest artist. May I introduce Aaron Siegel, substitute pretty pictures maker. Thank you very much for filling in and for giving Allison a well-deserved week off. All right, let's do this. As promised, we're back to talk about gamification. Gamification may be the most important thing this industry ever does. Not a lot of people are aware of it yet, but in 10 years, I can guarantee you will be. Gamification is simply the idea of taking the principles of play, the things we've learned in three decades of making video games, and using them to make real-world activities more engaging. On paper, that sounds great. It sounds like it could be the key to solving all of our problems with education, to making the workplace more exciting, to getting people to want to re-engage and become socially responsible. But with every great innovation comes the potential for abuse, and this one's no exception. Perhaps we can unleash on the world a way to make everything more compelling and see humanity embrace it for the greatest good. 
Perhaps we can bring the same ideas that make you play World of Warcraft for 20 hours a week and instead use them to make learning another language or helping to restore a park just as engaging, just as exciting as riding around on a giant boar and holding off a band of marauding elves. Hell, maybe we can figure out a way to combine the two experiences. I don't know. And perhaps in doing so, we'll actually be able to create a better, happier, more contented world for the future. But at the same time, we have to consider the risks, the numerous ways this can go wrong in the face of greed and personal interests. Imagine if racking up debt or consuming specific products were reinforced by the same engagement techniques that keep you playing Facebook games way longer than you probably should. But alright, you get the idea. Let's talk specifics about how this works, both good and bad. The world is facing a really weird crisis right now. A crisis of engagement. Think about the variety of recreational activities we have today, from film and TV to music, video games, theme parks, comic books, even modern major league sports. Now compare all of that to the entertainment options mankind had even just a hundred years ago, and you can see how much more visceral and engaging we've managed to make our leisure. A lot of money and a lot of science have gone into figuring out how to keep ourselves entertained in the last hundred years, resulting in spectacles and entertainment unparalleled in human history. But the rest of life hasn't really kept up. Our education system has barely progressed beyond its 1800s Prussian model roots, and many jobs are no more enjoyable today than they were for our ancient forebears thousands of years ago. Even traditional advertising no longer holds our attention the way it once did, because we've become used to so much engagement per second. Our play is more fun than ever, and it's leaving real life in the dust. We need to fix this problem. If the pattern continues, more and more people are going to be tuning out at school and going through life hating their jobs. This isn't just a concern for basic human dignity. It's a real and pressing concern for society at large. Even with all of today's labor-saving devices, we've still seen a drop-off in individual workplace efficiency, and engagement in the American education system sure isn't faring any better. If refreshing your Facebook wall is more exciting than school or work, something's wrong. Hence, gamification. At its most basic, gamification <coughs> simply takes all those Skinner box techniques we all know so well from earlier episodes, leveling systems, achievements, quests, checklists, rewards, etc., and layers them over existing activities. Scanning barcodes when doing inventory becomes a lot more engaging when there's a progress bar on your barcode scanner showing you how much closer you are to leveling up each time you scan an item. Getting an achievement for going 20 whole days without a customer complaint, or for finishing 30 math problems in a single night, it practically ensures that no one drops the ball on day 18, or quits doing their math at problem 25. It's the exact same thing that pushes us to just finish this level. There have been studies on it. It works. It's proven to increase workplace productivity, facilitate learning, and even make patients take their medicine on time. But this is only the very beginning of how we can gamify our lives. There are a thousand vectors we can use to improve on this simple Skinner box core. Everything from integrating our school and work experience with the leisure we participate in in our free time, to simple aesthetic things like better contextualizing our work and making sure that the theme or setting is psychologically conducive to the activity itself. Kind of like how when you go to Disney World, everything down to the trash bins near the line for the rides all fit within the setting and don't break you out of that mindset of enjoying the ride. If we can do this, then we can deliver on a vision where we are as excited and energized to engage in our serious lives as much as we are our play lives. There will be less distinction between the two, and perhaps someday there won't be a difference at all. All work will be play, and all play will help enrich our lives. But there's a really nasty potential flip side to this idea, and it's already begun to happen. Companies are beginning to realize that we're no longer caught by traditional advertising the way we once were. We've been so bombarded by media that we don't even look at billboards anymore. We flip channels through commercials or just fast-forward straight through them. We don't even register banner ads on a web page any longer. So they've turned to new tools to compel us to shape our consumption in a way that's beneficial to them. Look at the rewards on your credit cards. The smarter companies have started having you level up for racking up debt. Check out the progress bar on your frequent flyer program, or the achievements that some of these programs are starting to dole out for taking routes that are more economical for them. Even the McDonald's annual Monopoly game is an example of gamification seeping into marketing. It directs you toward purchasing soft drinks and fries, the two most profitable items for them, by putting the most game pieces per dollar on those items. So, given all that, I don't really want to broadcast my nascent thoughts on how to really take this sort of thing to the next level. However, if any of you guys happen to be educators or doctors and you're interested in implementing these sort of tactics into your field, our email address is coming right up in the end credits. Usually James charges game companies a good bit of money for that kind of consulting, but in your case, he's happy to make an exception. Anything to help make reality a little more fun for everybody. So, yeah, that's about it. Gamification's gonna be big and it's probably gonna be awesome. Just be wary because somebody out there is going to try and use it against you. Just keep your eyes open. Thanks again to Aaron for the pretty pictures. See you next time. Okay, so gamification, there's obviously lots of different um, opinions on this. It can be used for good or bad. So this one just gives you a little bit extra um, sort of richness about what kind of things people might be thinking they could use for gamifying, not just the interfaces, but for experiences at large, so real-world experiences. Okay? okay, so that said, 
Shall I gamify you your coursework results? Here's the big test to see whether we like gamification or not. And to see what's the negative thing about it. So we can just have all of your coursework for, coursework, uh, for this, for this uh, course on a leaderboard. So would that encourage you to do more? Or would it put you off? Or would you then, if you're really not, you know, yeah, maybe if you're not doing so well, would that, would that, would that be a hindrance? Yes, Malcolm. Um, it would shift the uh, motivation for this, the for taking this course from uh, an intrinsic one to an extrinsic motivation, um, which would lessen, I guess, everything that I've taken from the course because I'm doing it for a different reason. Yes, that's very true. So, so therefore, it's just about the gameplay and not about the learning experiences or the outcomes that you might be having, which is what why you're bothering reading this all this crap. So, like lots of things that could use the application, I think it would detract from the main purpose of the actual system. Yeah. What about if it's um, just a really tedious activity, like, I mean, my problem with the, uh, with the um, sort of, I mean, obviously, think about it, you could say listening to music is a tedious activity, but let's not say that. Uh, so, with regard to the um, uh, pricing up or scanning of uh, barcodes, and you've got a leaderboard on your little um, scanning machine, it seems strange to me that people might not think that the people who aren't doing as much scanning would then just say, well, let's have a reverse competition about who can do less between themselves. You know, so it's, it's quite strange, I think, that people don't think that, that we as humans will do that because we just not, not, don't want to be scanning all the time like, you know, super fast for some reason. Um, it's important that they don't scan as much and their boss will have something to say. Yeah, that's possibly the case, so therefore it's more about, less about a game and more about a threat. Given that part of the game, if you lose, then you've lost, and there's some kind of, I mean, most things in terms of life, if you lose, then people refrain from losing because there's some kind of consequence. Yeah. And people refrain from doing bad because they think that goes to hell, not because they think doing bad, is, you just shouldn't do it for some reason. Well, that's not necessarily the case if you're a humanist, but anyway, okay. Uh, yes? I guess it also adds this element of, oh, you're being monitored, and to a certain extent, that's kind of, um... I'd like to say invasion of privacy, but that's not quite what I'm going for. It's quite like you feel like you have no kind of liberty to, you know, like, I'm tired of I'm going to scan it. Yeah. You know, okay, now I'm feeling more right, let's scan it faster. Like, do you see what I mean? Because you feel, you have this feeling that you're constantly being monitored by yeah. like, you know, something or someone? Yes, yeah, yes. Is there a concept of, like, team gaming? Yeah, I mean, there is. When I was working with data entry, it wouldn't be this versus and this versus and this versus and this The teams were all competing at the end of the day for how many they got through as a group. It was never anyone singled out. So you, you did it more as part of the team, team. to help you win. To push it on. So, yeah, maybe in these team dynamics, maybe there's some use for it. I'm not sure. I mean, um, who of you guys has to write, has to come in and take, do attendance? I mean, do all the lectures, lecturers make you take attendance? Some do, some don't. Yeah, no. Certainly yeah. not first or second. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't, you don't take a sense either because I don't care about, because generally you grow up so I expect you to come or not, and obviously a lot of people don't. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's one of the things with this monitoring aspect, that if it's, a, if it's truly a game, you're not thinking that I'm being monitored, and you, and you are being monitored. I mean, there might, you might be right that there may be some adverse effect, and that's okay because games and the real world has adverse effects in something. I'm not quite sure how that would build into how I'd like to be to be to be the on the recipient of that adverse effect if, if if I wasn't fulfilling what somebody else's idea of what I should do would be. Like for instance, you know, am I not am I doing enough hours in preparation or not? I mean as long as the, the lectures are prepared and they're delivered correctly, does it matter? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to gamify everything because with a tendency and people just cheat the system, they just get someone else to sign them in. Yeah. It's like, I'll see a buy this scan thing, you say obviously they could flip the scale and, and do less. So there's loads of examples of that. Um, and, and in fact, that becomes a game. Just yeah. not the game we want. What are we having? Yeah. Okay. But is that an error in the game itself or in the creation of the game? Very well, maybe an error in the creation of the game. Who knows? I mean, I'm not sure. I, I, you know. I, I think it depends about it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve and how you're trying to use the information at the time that you're trying to use it. That's the that's the big thing I think. And I think there's also a tendency in management to want to push more and more and more and get more and more and more out of people, but you're not it doesn't 
discuss things like quality. It only discusses quantity. And that's, that can be, you know, the sort of leaderboards and these kind of things. You discuss quantity, not quality of the experience or quality of the work that's been done. If you've done lots of work but it's all crap, on the leaderboard I'm the best, theoretically. Yes? Um, I don't really want to move on, but I, just, I was just going to say I've never seen an example of gamification in the long run uh, ever provide a system with uh, um, a kind of a stable, uh, stable value. Um, so I think Reddit is an example of something that's sort of ground up gamification because you've got points that you uh, collect as you submit stories. Yeah. But over the years, I've sort of generally progressed into users being motivated to submit stories that aren't necessarily interesting for um, you, but just things that would get points. So, yes. And that, that doesn't that necessarily provide the best service for the site. Um, it's just a just gaming the system, basically. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so. Yes. Well, I think on like the flip side of that, uh, I think like Stack Overflow is a prime example of gamification working, and like obviously. People aren't just submitting answers just to get points. They're submitting quality answers so that they can get points. So then it is a long-term effect and it is working. I think it's. I think it's again as with most things. If you if you're going to do it well, then it may be in some ways there may be something there, especially with the fun. I think it's blurred. Okay, so let's say with the engagement itself. But I think there's ways that we can, you know. Use this kind of stuff usefully to increase engagement. I don't think it's a panacea. I certainly don't think it's, as the um, video said, the biggest thing we'll ever do in this, you know, in games domain and all this kind of stuff. I don't think it's quite like that. Of course, Penny Arcade's a company that wants to sell stuff too. So, <laughs> um, okay, let's move on slightly. Um, so, as with all the other, as with these other four chapters that you've got. We've got this collated principles, collated engagement concepts, concepts of engagement, or something which we call them engagement. Okay? So these ones are created from various different books and various different texts, both in gamification and in um, phonology and the social networking stuff. And so you can see that there's a set of principles which have got a number of overlaps. These principles in honesty, these principles probably won't be used that much outside because this, this engagement thing is pretty new. Okay? This gamification guy is saying, oh, you, know, you probably haven't heard of it now, but in the next 10 years you will. Maybe you will, but now lots of companies that you might be going to might not generally know about this stuff directly. Okay? So, in the user experience domain, you won't get that many UX departments who are going, oh, tell us all we know about uh, enticement. Blah, blah blah or whatever or look at um, I don't know uh, uh, Dugan's principles of contextual communication. They're not going to be doing this kind of stuff because generally it's just quite new. Okay? This this bit is quite new. However, it's useful to understand the, the sort of the work that's out there up to date, so up to this point, 2012, about what's actually uh, what terms you might come across in the future. Okay, but maybe you're going to be the people driving this. Okay? These new terms. So they're up here, I'm not going to go into them much because I've isolated, you'll see in the notes, with rationale, I've isolated sets of terms that I think are useful. Now, with all of these notes that you're reading, the bit, the bit where I'm talking about the isolation of the terms, why I'm combining terms, why I'm discarding them, does it matter at this point? I won't be asking you any of this in the exam directly, so if you're going to revise this stuff, I'm not going to say, why did Simon Harper just you know, remove this term, which is crazy. Okay? There's a set of principles which I think are reasonably correct and that are amalgamated, and there's a set of collated principles. I won't be asking much about the collated principles. The collated principles don't interest me directly. They're there so that you guys can understand that there are a set, that, that my one view of it isn't the only one of it. And that these ones here, if you do further reading, you might make your own set of principles which are, even more, which are useful to you. Okay, we've got some more, and we can see there's some repetition in these as well because we can make things fun and they're repetitious from the usability side. So, for instance, learning, learning and learnability is part of fun, apparently. Okay, so that's that's the case. In, that's true in some cases. Things like narrative and personalisation, uh, social aspects. Okay, so these things are all there, and we can see that we've got a number of um, uh, references for this kind of work. Okay, so. Lots of principles. I think there's only three because I don't think they're that testable. And I think that this isn't really about the principles directly. It's about feel. If you've read 
I'm going to keep asking this. Who's read? Does anybody else move to the mountains? One, two, three. Jeez. Okay. Um, in telling the ultimate of maintenance, the concept of field comes over. Okay, so it's something that's difficult to quantify directly, but it's just in, in this regard: how we feel quality, how we feel about the work we're doing, how we feel about uh, the mechanics of the um, repairs on motorcycles in the ultimate maintenance. Okay, so field comes into it quite a lot, and I can talk to you here about these kinds of principles: social. Progression, play, okay? Because it's really about the feel. Once you actually put this into a game, into a, a development, you will hopefully have an idea about what the feel, or let the users tell you what their feel of it is. Is it too games heavy? Is it too much? Is it like um, everyone used to do in the old days when we used to hand code um, HTML on the notebook, notepad, um, and we'd always put flashing pink thing, blinking pink. We'd use blink all over the place, because we could, and it all over the place. You know, it was like a, a, a strobing nightmare, okay? Mainly it's because we could do it. Now, it can be the same with this kind of stuff. Why? Well, we'll have loads of play elements, game elements, fun elements, and it just makes it look like a right goes doing it, okay? You need to get the feel. It's, not, it's just difficult to quantify, okay? So I'm just giving you these principles. Because I think they're overriding principles that you ought to be thinking about, but they're by no means definitive. Yeah? So social. So include aspects, as we said, of social interaction, of social play. We know psychologically, we know psychologically, that people do work better in teams, even though some people might not like it, or we might not do it. But people, most of the population work better in small groups. Okay? They're used to living in small groups, in family groups, so they're bound to, if we think about it. Most, likely the most used to hunting in small groups. In more natural environments, most of the activities are done in small groups. Okay. So people are keyed to this small group work because they feel supported. So give them a feeling, even if it isn't a feeling that they're working in a small group, that there is some person who's supporting you. We talked last week about Ling's cars and how one of the definitive things there is that everybody who's online isn't a bot, they're a real person and they'll help you. They'll help them immediately. There's lots of people waiting on the chat. Okay, it's that easy. There's no phone call to make. So if people feel supported because there's more than men there. Okay, and it's the same with these with the with the engagement that we've been talking that we've spoken about. Progression. I think as with with all of the discussions, whether we agree with this gamification or not, we've discussed progression. So leaderboards, these percentage complete things. Um, they're all about progression. Are we progressing from level to level? Are we progressing? And how does our progression relate to others? Okay. So that progression seems to be something that lots and lots of these phonology and gamification people talk about. And so if you're thinking about this, it might not be the right solution. It might be, just like we've discussed, a force for evil because we're allowing the management to uh, make us work more. Or it might be that we also be talking about maybe it allows motivation for a group of people where no individual is picked out, um, but the group progresses, okay, better or not. Uh, those kind of things might be useful. This progression, this leaderboard stuff, may be useful. Play, fun, play, and enjoyment. Well, sometimes if it's a very boring or repetitive task, why not add something that will make the person at the other end laugh or do, or do something for no apparent reason? It doesn't mean anything, it's not necessarily even related directly to the work. It's just a bit of fun. Okay? So that they are taken for a moment out of the monotony of what they're doing. Because lots of tasks that require software engineering are going to be monotonous. Now, should we have phonology and gamification on a flight deck of an airline? Probably not, I'm thinking. Okay? Because that yes. Possibly, although I think a lot of the engagement comes through. Well, possibly. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I just think that you, you need to think about this. That sometimes it might be that those fun elements divert them from doing something that they should be doing. If it's helping, yeah, possibly. But. 
in those kind of scenarios where you've got lots of situational awareness required, you've got lots of real-time things that could go terribly wrong, it's probably not such a good idea. Okay? However, my mind, as I'm telling you this, is drawn back to the, um, to the image of a nuclear reactor uh, control room whereby it was a, a big um, usability problem actually, whereby um, two buttons which did two different things looked exactly the same and were next to each other. Okay? And so those two different things could therefore, pulling one of them at, a, at the incorrect point gives a critical outcome, i.e. something goes wrong with the reactor. Okay? And, and what people have done then is they could have just easily marked them with a picture or something like this. But what they did was they went and got a hand pull vehicle and a, um, a pressure vehicle that you get on, say, a normal log or something, and stuck them on top of the two knobs. So then they pull the hand pull one or they do the, do the log one. So they referred to it as kind of, a, kind of a bitter or kind of a log. Do the bitter, do the log. So is that fun? Kind of, even though it's a very serious activity. But it's there because there's a design problem. Okay, it's to get over a, a design fault that the designers have, have created. It's just bland and looks the same. Yeah? It's the same with a lot of cases with um, sound mixing desks. Sound mixing desks look very repetitious. It's very difficult. You can easily get it wrong okay, on a sound mixing desk. So therefore, some people um, put little gonks and little weird things over it so that they understand what, what the, each of the frequencies are, what they're doing, okay, to help them remind, to help their memory. Yeah. Okay. Questions to think about when you design a prototype for social, social dynamics. Give me some ideas. Don't look at the notes. Any ideas for if we're thinking about social dynamics, this kind of adding a bit more social stuff? Well, I've been speaking about it, I've been blurring about it a bit. People in Europe, you guys can say something. I'm going horse. Okay? Questions? What things do you want to think about? Say again? Can it communicate with other devices? Yeah. So can you actually move the uh, information around in a kind of a more yeah. social way than just sending it by email directly or something? Can it, you know, is there some proximity aspect to it as well, to the communication maybe? Yeah? Anything else? Well, these aren't by any way complete, but I've got these. Suitable functionality to facilitate collaboration. So this is exactly that. Devices. Are aspects such as social communication accounted for? Is there some facility whereby you can be in the middle of the task and then contact somebody else, contact a domain expert immediately if you're halfway through the task. Pause the task and get advice, get feedback, get somebody to help you. Okay? Microsoft, it is Microsoft, Microsoft do this internally. So they have an internal expert system okay, whereby you can whip onto that expert system and somebody from who's meant to be the expert in your domain because they're then a load of other followers, but they're, they're, they're the real gardener. Have you heard that term, gardener? Knowledge gardener or wicked gardener? Okay, well, you might hear it. So they're called gardeners. So it's somebody who's responsible for that thing and adds the seeds and you know, adds, uh, does a bit of turning over the soil every so often okay, to facilitate that actually something's happening uh, on the wiki or in the knowledge base. Okay, okay, so those guys will then help, help the person at Microsoft who needs to ask this problem in the middle of the task. Do you make the real and virtual to facilitate better user engagement? Okay, so for instance, if you're using jargon or terminology outside of outside of the of the system, can you include that in the system? Can you include things yeah, yeah, yeah. That, uh, that, that are in people's mind based on the task that they're doing or the group that they're in? Do you can you allow them to personalise their interface such that that a particular group has a very specific Kind of interface. When you did your first year projects with a group, hopefully if it was a good group and everybody turned up, maybe they if it was a hopefully it was a good group, you had that shared kind of motivation. Okay? So can, how can you also have that shared motivation? Yeah, okay, so the rest. So progression. This is an easy one. The specifics of progression are quite easy to just talk about. So somebody else can tell me what do we all think about when we're talking about progression? Quickly. Boy, it really is the went session, isn't it? Because you're all gagging to go for a cookie now, isn't it? All right.
It tells the goals by stages. Okay, so if you're going to do progression, is there goals that we can attain by stages? So instead of penalising people for not for not getting to a stage, we reward them by getting to a stage. Instead of saying the people at the bottom of the scanning leaderboard are going to get a kicking, which isn't going to increase their motivation, we say the people at the top get a brownie point and can try and make the people at the bottom. Kind of. Um, that's motivation and reward. Narrative flow. So narrative flow is, in, is usually important, okay? So therefore, understanding whether there's narrative flow, whether people understand what this is and how they can actually, um, in real, in normal English language or a normal language, natural language, understand what they need to do. Um, facilitate play. Look and feel playful, like a game. We spoke last week that people's perception of the user experience starts before they have that user experience. And it's also defined by that. In cognitive science, as we discussed last week, um, you, it's generally your perception of, if you have a perception that the experience will be bad, even if that experience is good, it can be bad. You'll, at the end, you'll rate it as being a bad experience. If, you have, if your perception of the experience is being good, and you have a bad experience, you're still rated as being better than you would have. Okay? Just, that's just the way we are. There's lots of work in psychology and cognitive science on that. Okay? And so, trying to engage people before they even, if it's just visual, before they even sit down, makes them feel better about it. Okay? Makes them feel more engaged. Um, will the users leave? Feeling with, uh, with a feeling of full enjoyment. Do elements of play include really, uh, really have the user experience? So, you need to think about all those things. Now, might not be the answer. Okay, so all this stuff may not be the answer. We may just want to say we don't care. Um, I've talked about Luke Delson and Henry and Virgil. Um, the thing that will tell you whether any of this is working properly is the user response. And we're going to get to that in the next four lectures about user evaluation and empirical work. Okay. But we're going to have, but asking the users is the, is the thing, is the basic form. No matter what you think, if the users really think it's a good idea and they really like it, then that's what we go with most of um, You'll see in the notes that I've got a number of reasons why I don't think gamification is necessarily a great thing. Um, so you need to also, so have a look at those reasons as well, have a look at those rationales. What are those cons? Okay, we've, we've done this. This is for those who didn't see the Yerkes uh, uh, some curve last week. So, generally, against performance and arousal, we have a point which is optimal. And after that, any more arousal, our performance decreases. Yeah, hugely. Okay. <coughs> Discussion topic, coursework three. This is the easiest bit you've got to do of this course. This emotional design thing. You don't have to read the book, you just have to look at the abstracted thing online. Okay? And this abstracted thing online, easy peasy lemon squeezy, it's very short. Yeah? So I want a little bit more from your with your personal opinion. Instead of the discussion, instead of describing it, I want a bit more of your personal opinion now that we've done this uh, implicit sorry, intangible, subjective kind of work that goes along with both aesthetics last week, emotion, and engagement this week. Yeah? Pop quiz, we're not going to bother that. Well, we are going to bother with it next week, but I'm not going to tell you to talk to you now, but there will be a pop quiz next week. What is the sceptic view of gamification? Etc. Etc. Yes? When you say pop quiz, it's not really. Oh, bugger! <laughs> Yeah, that's not enough time, is it, really, I suppose? Well, I'm going to start, I'm going to be babbling on at you about it, and I'm going to ring, I mean, generally, nobody answered any of these anyway this time, so the other week. So I'm going to be still ringing it out of you tomorrow, in LF15. Okay. Topics for next week. Obviously not next week. Okay, but we're going to do, this one here is next logical week. So generally, well, when the next logical week should be, so it needs to be under the next week. 
Yeah. Um, and the pop quiz we're going to do tomorrow, read the notes at the end of self separate questions by Easter, and all the other stuff we've got to do. If you want to come see me about in this, please do. Um, and I'll see you remember tomorrow, 5 until 7, LF 15. Okay? Alright, okay, off we go.